Right now on Denver 7 News at 7 o'clock on Local 3, more fallout over the leaked decision on abortion from the Supreme Court. We have a 360 in-depth coverage this morning on the investigation into who leaked it. We have two different stories from women who have had the procedure and what Colorado lawmakers are doing to reinforce reproductive rights here. Four months after the Marshall Fire, Boulder County leaders want people to rebuild with more fire-resistant materials. We'll take a closer look at the proposal heading to county commissioners. And the Avs will be back on the ice tomorrow night after pouncing the Predators in Game 1. We have highlights from Ball Arena as they are one step closer to hoisting the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. They need 15 more wins. Oh, that's nothing. They can just ride that momentum all the way to the finals. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Brian Sanders. I'm Nicole Brady. It's going to be a wet day across the state. Lisa is here uh, loving the rain. We do have some warmer temperatures on the way as well. We do. Yeah, a nice little combination as we head into the weekend. Today is bike to school day, though, and it's going to be on the cooler side. See, so your kids are going to want to wear a jacket early this morning, and we may see a few scattered showers starting to develop by a late afternoon. Highs will be right around 50 this afternoon. Early on right now, we're at about 40, 42 degrees and snow is falling in the northern Front Range Mountains. We're going to pick up at least a few inches of snow above 10,000 feet there and across the plains as the storm continues to move east. More showers will be likely this afternoon and evening. Right now it's mainly cloud cover. Winds are at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. It does feel more like freezing just above freezing this morning when you factor in those winds. Here's a look at our highs anywhere from 50 near 50 in Denver to 49 in Highlands Ranch and 30s and low 40s for the mountains. So things will warm up significantly starting tomorrow. In fact, we're going to be about 20 to degrees warmer than this on Thursday. Details on our Super 7 day coming up. And we still have some wet conditions around town. We have some, some foggy conditions around town and snowy conditions to the west. You can see the snow falling right now on I-70 just on the east side of the Eisenhower Johnson tunnels. It is enough to cause some uh, slowing here across the roadways. Loveland Pass is closed because of a crash and Berthoud Pass. Some traction laws up there because of the snowy conditions. Take a look at the drive here up into town, up in the north side of town. Big crash on southbound I-25 right here near Northwest Parkway. Take a look from the camera back at Erie and you see how badly traffic is backed up. These folks trying to come onto the highway. It is just stacked up with just one of the three lanes open. It's causing a traffic jam of about a half an hour. You can see it on the map here this morning, so it's really slow. Some of the side streets, including Washington Street, can get you through there a little bit faster and they get down to, let's say, 144th and save yourself some time. The rest of the drive looks pretty standard for us. Wet roads here and there. One crash in Aurora at 17th and Yosemite. Well, our country's highest court is doing some damage control today after a leaked draft decision revealed justices are leaning mm. towards overturning Roe versus Wade and the right to an abortion. This morning, we're going 360 in depth on the fallout, taking a closer look at the investigation into who leaked the document. We're also hearing from two Colorado women with different perspectives after having abortions. Also, Colorado lawmakers are working to strengthen a new law protecting access to reproductive care, including abortion here. Denver 7's Christian Lopez kicks off our coverage from our newsroom this morning. And Chief Justice John Roberts has ordered an investigation into who leaked it. Yeah, that's right. Chief Justice Roberts called this an egregious breach of trust, and he vowed that any attempt to undermine the integrity of the court would not succeed. That investigation will now be led by the marshal of the court, who is also in charge of the Supreme Court's own police department. But it's not clear how much experience they have conducting an investigation like this because a full decision has never been leaked before. And if they did find evidence of a crime, CNN reports that they could refer the case to the Justice Department for prosecution. But there's a very small group of people who could have had access to that document. Just the nine justices and the people working within their chambers. So that's about 50 people in total. The clerks who work with the justices sign a, uh, an oath that um, promises that they, they won't divulge secrets um, of the process. And there, there is a very, very small group of people that would be in a position to see a draft opinion um, and leak it. Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser, who was a Democrat, who also clerked at the court for Justices Byron White and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, called this uncharted territory and says it's going to be very hard for the Supreme Court to gain back the public's trust. Chief Justice Roberts is worried about the legitimacy of the court. And this decision, coupled now with this leak, is 
a dagger to the court's legitimacy. This is antithetical to how the Supreme Court has operated as an institution committed to a deliberative process that is in a trusted environment. This is a breach of trust. And you may be wondering why Chief Justice Roberts doesn't call for the FBI or the Justice Department to investigate like some lawmakers have. He's known for trying to refocus the court to its original role of restraint and the separation of powers. Court watchers say he'll try to avoid getting those agencies involved since they're part of the executive branch. Live in the newsroom this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Thank you, Christian. Also this morning, we're hearing different perspectives from two women who both had abortions, but with very different experiences and opinions about them now. Selena said she felt like it was the right thing to do for her at the time. Not just financially, but I think physically and emotionally, I would not be as healthy of a person as I am right now. Abortion care doesn't have to be traumatic. It's, it's societal stigma that traumatizes people. Rachel, on the other hand, said she regrets having an abortion and does not believe she had the moral authority to take a life. I made that decision really early in the pregnancy. I think I was trying to run from um, my consequences, from the experience. I had made the choice to end a life, and I did that pretty deliberately, honestly. But I thought it was worth it for the future that I wanted. Well, with or without Roe v. Wade, Colorado allows abortions. That right was put into law this legislative session, but it doesn't mean the law is permanent. It's a statutory change, meaning lawmakers or voters could undo it with a simple majority vote. There's an effort now to create a ballot question that would put the law into Colorado's constitution, and that's in the works for 2024. Anti-abortion groups are also working on a measure of their own. Initiative 56 would ban abortions at all stages of pregnancy, except for a few rare instances like to save the mother's life. Supporters are in the process of collecting signatures to officially get it on the ballot. Abortion has been one of our country's most divisive issues for more than a generation now. In a new poll from ABC News and The Washington Post, 54% of Americans said the Supreme Court should uphold Roe v. Wade. 28% said it should be overturned. In that same poll, 70% said the decision to have an abortion should be left to a woman and her doctor. 24% surveyed said it should be regulated by law. Our 360 in-depth coverage continues in our next half hour, including what this decision could mean for other SCOTUS rulings like same-sex marriage. A proposal for statewide green building codes will go to the state Senate today. It passed the House by just one vote on Monday. The bill calls for the state energy office to create an advisory panel to build up energy efficiency standards and rules to make sure buildings are ready for things like solar panels, electric vehicle chargers, and all electric heating and cooling systems. State estimates show residential and commercial buildings accounted for about 14% of greenhouse gas emissions in 2019. Meanwhile, in the aftermath of the Marshall Fire, local leaders want homeowners to consider building with better materials that won't ignite or burn. A proposal to change the Boulder County Building Code is going in front of county commissioners. Right now, the standards only apply to the county's foothills communities. This change would extend it to the flatlands as well. And a sign of progress here. The town of Superior shared this photo. Terry and Ed received the first rebuilding permit in original town Superior following the fire. We do have some breaking sports news this morning. It is official. The Broncos will be headed to London this fall. They will play the Jaguars at Wembley Stadium on October 30th. This is part of the NFL's effort to gain a larger international following. There will be three NFL games in London this season, one in Munich and one in Mexico City. We're hearing from Russell Wilson in our next half hour. Well, the Colorado Avalanche are off to a good start in the playoffs, winning game one of their series against the Predators. And not just a win, it was a blowout 7-2 to two last night. Uh, the Avs put on quite the show early on. Uh, game two is tomorrow night. And we're looking toward the Stanley Cup. It's been 21 years since yep. the Avs last won the Stanley Cup. So, long time coming. The great resignation isn't slowing down. Job openings hit a new record high. We're taking a closer look at the industries with the most postings. And it is a special reunion here just ahead of Mother's Day. 
This one was a long time in the making. A Colorado woman is finally meeting her birth mom after more than 50 years apart.